So um, without any further delay, let's uh, start uh, today's uh, conference. Uh, today we have a keynote from Lars Porolsky. Lars has uh, decades of experience uh, in module making, especially uh, with estimating the module reliability. So Lars was a uh, CTO of former uh, module maker Solon. He was on board member for several PV companies. He served as uh, R&D director for crystalline silicon wing of uh, First Solar. He was also part of the management board of uh, PI Berlin before the current position of uh, board member for Solico, which is sourcing modules from China. Last, uh, we are really excited to see your experiences with the module reliability and your testing results. Last. Okay, good morning, everyone. So I hope that I can share my screen now. Shravan, I cannot share my screen. Uh, just a minute. I think uh, IT is using that. Uh, yeah. No. no. I think you okay. should. Yes. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks. Thank you for Taya News for giving me the opportunity to, opportunity to share our our insights into reliability testing of TopCon modules. And um, as a quick introduction, uh, you everyone knows that basically for a decade, PERC was a dominating solar cell technology. And PERC has been demonstrated to be very reliable. Um, initially, there have been some low quality products on the market, which has suffered from PID or LETID. But at the end, uh, PERC has been proven to be very reliable. And this actually for both module designs, uh, dual glass and also glass back sheet. And then actually pretty fast, um, like a new technology came up. Uh, Topcon has been in the market like since uh, 2018, 2019, with the first commercial products, but actually Jollywood from our perspective at least was, was a pioneer. And then there was like a slow start, a few more manufacturers came, but until let's say two years ago, Topcon was really a niche technology and actually only a few producers who were really specialized on Topcon uh, were offering such products on a commercial level. But then actually over the past two years, uh, Topcon became very quickly for basically the dominant technology uh, was, was competing and seems to be wiping out PERC in the near future. And uh, as always, uh, in an in industry like the, the key for that is availability of equipment. Now, actually, or, or like since a short time, everyone can buy equipment to produce Topcon. Um, and now, actually, everyone could become a Topcon producer um, overnight. And as you can see here in the graph, it's supposed that Topcon will, will um, be the predominant technology for crystalline silicon. Um, very shortly. Yeah, on the other hand, um, I think everyone has been hearing these rumors uh, about reliability problems with Topcon. Uh, it started like, like a year ago, and since six months, actually, there has been a lot of debates also in public, just a few spotlights here that has been um, on, a, on a newsletter. And Actually, also some, some manufacturers uh, who have been intensively investing in R&D has published guidelines that certain types of top coin modules are restricted for, for the usage uh, in certain regions. Um, and for example, this is from one particular producer here and the new guideline, they are saying there's no approval to install the modules in tropical regions, the warranties do not apply. Um, so obviously, there has been some issues with some part, top con modules, at least in some parts of the world. And um, in a post on LinkedIn, um, Tilo Kinkel, he was mentioning that Biowa currently will not make glass foil modules available to the market. So obviously, also Biowa had some kind of negative experience with top con. But there has been a debate because also other, other experts have been less critical. You see here like an expert from Tuf Rhineland, he's saying 
we do not expect top corn modules to behave drastically different from conventional PV modules when it comes to water vapor ingress. So there is a debate and at least our takeaway is that currently there is some kind of uncertainty in the market about TopCon. Is that 100% reliable? Is TopCon a good technology? Or is TopCon something which has too many risks and, and should not be used for some long-term investments? And first of all, maybe we should take a look what we are talking about. Uh, here is a, is a cross section on the, uh, on, the, on the architecture, on the key architecture for PERC and TopCon. And um, actually, I was stealing this graph from RATC um, because I think it's a very, very good and very clear uh, sketch. And for TopCon, you can see there are basically two differences. TopCon has additional passivation layers, both on the front side and the back side. And it has a different type of metallization. Uh, what is most common now uh, for top corn metallization is a paste which is a, consists out of silver with some aluminum. Um, These are some very special technical reasons, but, but the passivation layers and also the metallization materials uh, is, a, is a main difference from perk to top corn. And uh, yeah, maybe these are, these are reasons or these are the root causes. Uh, for some of the uh, degradation mechanisms that have been observed in the field. So, yeah, maybe why, why we have been invited. Uh, as Michael just said, we are currently not a module producer. Uh, we, are, we are providing um, superior solar products to the European rooftop market, but we have a long experience in, in TopCon, actually. As Michael mentioned, uh, at least also myself and some other members of our team, we have been in the manufacturing industry. And actually, we were part of the very first commercial TopCon manufacturing project, which dated back um, like, like 10 years ago. And, um, and at least I personally, I was in charge of module R&D at that time. And also, like since six years now, uh, we own and operate the probably first commercial scale TopCon uh, installation in Europe. It's not huge, it's 160 megawatt, but at least we have six years of, of field experience. And already since 2020, like we are collaborating with, with several Asian TopCon producers. And I think we have been one of the pioneers to really setting TopCon modules to the European rooftop market. So TopCon is nothing which we have just heard like a year ago, but something that, that we have in mind as being a very good solar technology already, already for a decade. So what did we do? See, we were testing samples of commercially available TopCon modules, both dual glass and glass back sheets, uh, basically all the same form factor using M10 TopCon cells, 100 half cut solar cells. That is what, what predominantly is used here for the, for the rooftop market, at least in Germany. And in order to exclude land time effects, we have a tested minimum two samples of every type. And uh, what has been done after an initial inspection, uh, current induced uh, testing or degradation had been applied in order to ensure that this, uh, this kind of effect uh, is, is already gone when we go to the climate chamber testing. Because then panels have been put into the climate chamber at the standard damp heat conditions, which means 85% uh, relative humidity, 85 centigrade, according to the ISC test criteria. And actually, we have repeated these tests three times uh, to damp heat 3000. Because this is like a, like a common test uh, for any kind of PV product, how the sensitivity is uh, against moisture. The test has been done uh, at an external accredited test lab uh, from FI Berlin in Berlin. And actually, the, 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 the products that you will see uh, is, uh, will be anon anonymized. So like the factories that we are working with, we are just calling them A, B, C, D, et cetera. Um, so the, you, I, I will not be in a position here to really disclose any kind of product names. So what has been tested? First, let us first start with dual glass products that we have tested many different top con dual glass modules in the past. I'm just showing like two examples here. And these are actually the two extremes because it turns out that top con double glass is conceptually very reliable. So the, the best product uh, that we have tested has a degradation of only 2% after Dempy 3000 and let's say the worst product. 
um, has a degradation of about 5% after the MP3000, but um, we could not find any product with, with, with had a worse um, behavior. So all top double glass is very, uh, very reliable, obviously. And uh, if you compare this to what we have tested for PERC, it's basically the same. So the red line here, it's, it's actually from the same manufacturer, uh, factory D, um, the PERC product, and has the exact same behavior than TopCon. So obviously for dual glass, um, at least is our assessment that TopCon is, is a very good technology and doesn't lead to any kind of problems. But the debate mostly in the, in the press has been about uh, glass backsheet uh, because of course glass backsheet is very popular for many applications. It's maybe a little more lightweight and some people who does not need uh, the bifaciality uh, still prefer glass backsheet. And for glass backsheet, actually the results are is really, really very different. You can see here the test results uh, of four products. Um, actually for, for two products, we have done DMP 3000 for two products. Uh, the degradation was so fast uh, in the beginning after DMP 1000 that actually we have stopped testing there. Um, what you can see is actually like, like a very good product, even after DMP 3000, it still has 97% of the initial power. You see products, which have a very poor performance, degrade very fast, and you can find basically anything in between. As an example here from Factory Y, uh, there's a product which is not a disaster, but uh, at least it has 10% degradation after the MP3000, which is definitely a higher degradation than what we can find in any kind of double glass module. The next slide here actually is a, compares the double glass with a, with a champion actually for glass backsheet. So the blue curves are the dual glass modules, which I've already shown you before. And the, the brown curve here is the, is the best glass backsheet module that we found in our test. And actually what you can see is, it is possible to have a very good, very stable glass backsheet modules with top consoler cells also. So actually the, the champion, um, from our glass backsheet, a test candidates actually performs better than some of the double glass modules. So it's definitely not true to say that TopCon glass backsheet is always or leads always to problems. That's definitely not true. There are very good TopCon glass backsheets on the market too. Yeah, it's very interesting to have an analysis of what happens to get to, to uh, or why the products are degrading. So what you can see here again is the glass backsheet modules and we have listed here in the table, uh, some technical data for ISC, VOC, fill factor, and then power for the three panels which show like relevant degradation. And it's very interesting to see that there's a common effect that the, the open circuit voltage is not affected at all even for products which basically lose 50% of power already after the 1000. Um, actually, the, the VOC is still okay. And we will come, what does that mean? Um, we will come to that in a minute. Um, as you can see, it's mostly the fill factor that is degrading, uh, but also you can see some slight degradation for uh, short circuit current. So what does that mean actually? Um, so, we cannot give any kind of, of lessons here on, on solar cell technology really in detail, but VOC constant means that the passivation of the solar cell device is not really affected. Um, it seems that the passivation layers are still okay. A strong degradation in fill factor means you have an increase in series resistance, a very strong increase in series resistance, and this seems to be like the predominant failure mode here. And that you also see some degradation in short circuit current um, is an indication that probably in some areas of the solar cell, the, um, the series resistance is so high that some areas basically cannot contribute to the current any uh, uh, yeah to the current anymore. This is why you also have a slight degradation in short circuit current, but it's basically the fill factor um, that is affected here. And uh, there has been a lot of like really very scientific publications also over the past month here. And what it turns out that 
it seems like like all scientists have the common understanding that obviously the front side metallization seems to be the most critical part of the solar cell architecture and what might be the root cause here is the is the, is the paste that is used um, for top for perk what i've shown in the beginning it was basically silver paste but here for topcon uh, for certain reasons a mixture of silver with aluminum is very common to to be used and aluminum as you know can can oxidize and then it can uh, it can lose its conductivity so what is what is really like like mostly accepted now as an explanation uh, for degradation of topcon is like a corrosion of the front metallization paste which is losing its conductivity and it's leading to a larger series resistance and respectively to, to a loss of pull factor so yeah just a quick summary here um, uh, like dual glass modules seems to be very reliable topcon shows the same behavior um, as perk all products that we tested even after dampy 3000 have a power loss of less than five percent we see still we see some differences uh, because really some products turn to be very very really fully stable and actually we are continuing now beyond dampy 3000 in order to see how will they those products behave with four and 5,000 hours of, of climate chamber testing. And there are some products which seem to slowly further degrade uh, time over time. For glass black sheet modules, it is really a different, a different results. You see a very huge variation in product uh, quality regarding their heat stability. And we know that some factories have really shipped large volumes of modules which might turn out to be really low quality so it's not like some just some small scale production uh, has been shipped but really like high volume production of modules which might be very sensitive to moisture degradation are really out in the field but it is possible to design and to produce topcon glass back sheets modules which have a very good long-term stability basically same as dual glass yeah. that essentially essentially means that topcon needs a more careful product design but topcon itself is also suitable for glass back sheet modules if you do it right this is our position and actually i want to close here with a statement of Gertz Fischbeck, uh, who is saying if there are batches of topcon modules installed in the field that now exhibit problems it's, it's much more indicative of a manufacturer releasing their product prematurely then a sign of an overall problem with topcon and this is exactly our position yes you have to be careful with topcon glass back sheet but there is, is no reason to conceptually uh, like blame topcon uh, to be a problem or problematic technology yes thank you that's uh, that's my input uh, to this conference today great uh, thanks Lars. thank thanks a lot uh, that's really very really nice uh, summary of uh, your testing results. So um, a, a few questions if you have time. So um, are the encapsulations and the back sheets were of the same configuration when you are testing modules from different uh, suppliers? No, obviously not. So uh, different suppliers, of course, have using different bombs. Um, and there has been a debate like in the manufacturing industry I think that it's quite clear that you should not use only EVA like you do it with PERC. Like I think almost everyone, at least at the front side, is using PoE or EPE. Uh, but uh, regarding the rear encapsulant, I think there's a wide variation. Some people are using EVA. Some say we have to use PoE. Um, it seems like the, the back sheet material itself is not so critical. It's really the encapsulation material which is which is driving the reliability of the product. So, uh, you, you know, now you've worked on Topcon so much. So do you have also heterojunction in your radar? Because it's not so common to have a heterojunction back sheet module. So I think there's only one company that is making that. So do you do we can we see something from you in the in the near future for heterojunction yeah yeah of course we think uh, heterojunction is a good technology it's actually outperforming topcon for not only for output power but also for temperature coefficients for bifaciality and uh, yeah we are starting with this heterojunction actually we have 
in Germany already you can buy hetero junction from us. So we we have we have a commercial hetero junction product, but this is really dual glass. I think hetero junction for totally different reasons. It's also susceptible to moisture. That's clear. That's because of the TCO layer. Um, and I think basically all big suppliers are only doing double glass when offering hetero junction. Thanks a lot, Lars. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure.